Goodwin. Delivers the free kick in. It's a good ball, and it's the opening goal from the towering Harry Suter. That's a great run from Metcalf. Squares the ball, and Brandon Borello has his second goal in green and gold. Metcalf. He dinks the ball back in. Great header. Mitch Duke. Borello, first time off the post. Played back in. And Mitch Duke at the double. Two goals in two and a half minutes. Here is Boss on the attack. McLaren is there. The flag stays down. Now Sutar back for Luongo. His shot palmed out only as far as McLaren. And that's six. Here's Miller again. The cross in. McLaren this time is there for his hat trick. Australia seven, Bangladesh nil. It was an emphatic start for the Socceroos as their journey to reach the 2026 World Cup began. Seven unanswered goals and, well, it could have been more in the early hours of this morning here of, uh, in Oz. And it's the early evening over in Q8. They look to build on that performance as they face world number 96 Palestine and Jaba Al Ahmed International Stadium. We have a huge morning right here coming your way, and it is 5 pm kickoff time over in Q8. Hello and welcome. I'm Tara Rush, and it is great to have you company. And that of the gents alongside me, some legends who have donned the green and gold. A very good morning to Luke Wilkshire and Alex Bross. Welcome, team. Thank you. Early morning, morning, it is. It was. I could barely get my words <laughs> out at the beginning then. As I said, I haven't really been practicing long enough. Well, it was, as I said, absolutely ruthless against Bangladesh last week. And the Socceroos, they won't want to take their foot off the accelerator, that is for sure. But it will undoubtedly be an emotional evening for the Palestine national team who arrive amidst the, devastation, the devastating conflict of what is taking place in the region. The dream, the goal, it does remain the same for Palestine to qualify for a very first World Cup. And then on the flip side for the Socceroos, they want to qualify for the World Cup and not have to do it the long way. Yeah, for sure. Look, you, um, you know, nobody likes to see what's going on in the world at this point of time. And, you know, for this 90 minutes, the Palestinian players can focus on football, um, something that's a lot more positive. And the Socceroos, like you said, they started off well um, and they want to go on and go the shortest route possible to get to this next World Cup. And the first game that we saw, perfect start, scoring seven goals. We wondered, you know, where and how the goals were going to come. And, um, you know, obviously Suta got us off to a fly after four minutes, calmed the nerves, and then from there, all the strikers score, uh, scored some good goals, which was good to see, and, and a great uh, momentum builder, I think, for this one. You can take a look at the starting lineup on your screen just there. Just to quickly run through it, there are four changes, three of those in defence. Ryan Strain gets the nod at right back. Kai Rolls comes into centre back, as is Bayich on the left side of him, and Martin Boyle, who joined the team in Q8, comes in as well, flaring up of his knee. The man on screen there, Metcalf, Backus, Irvine, that middle midfield, the, the trio that it is, they've remained the same. But Connor Metcalf, he looks to be what is becoming a pivotal member of this national team. Yeah, look, he was excellent in that game and he, he drifted out wide and then cut inside. He just knew where, where to position himself on the field throughout the match and, and he was fantastic. He, he set up uh, Mitch Duke's goal, um, set up another one as well, actually. Just he, he was between him and Miller, their, their combination there in creating chances, the overlap that we wanted to see from Miller, getting in behind. I think tonight is going to be a difficult match as well with, um, you know, with how I think... Pac uh, Palestine is going to sit in and, and try and frustrate us a lot more. So it is um, interesting to see how, how uh, you know, Metcalf goes. He didn't get the glowing plaudits. Bacchus, who is on the screen right there. You're a big fan of him, though, Luke. He's so industrious in the work that he does in midfield. What impresses you most about him? Yeah, look, I think he's really come on, especially since the World Cup. He's, he's made that midfield position his own. Um, we, we, you know, talk about Metcalf and with Moy going and him filling in Bacchus now being an ever-present since the World Cup. He's moved to St Mirren, has come on leaps and bounds. He doesn't get the praise, because a lot of others do, but, um, you know, he's really holding that midfield together, anchoring it there, allowing Irvine to do the box-to-box -box work. Well, let's hear what the gaffer has planned ahead of tonight. Michael Zapponi caught up with him in Q8 and asked him about the addition of uh, Rolls, Bayich and, I'm missing one, um, Martin Boyle as well, and whether that bought the experience and was a reason for his changes tonight. You know, we used... Um... 16 players the other night against Bangladesh and uh, you know obviously being here in the Middle East is a bit different for some of the boys especially the young ones so getting experienced players on the field that have played here before is important. Ryan Strain comes in as well as your fourth change. Lewis Miller was very good the other night. Why that change? Yeah because uh, you know Strain did very well against England and uh, we got uh, we're creating depth and uh, 
you know, uh, making sure we've got competition for every, every uh, position on the field. You've done some analysis on Palestine. What are you expecting from them tonight? It'll be a different game, I'd imagine, from what you saw in Melbourne? Yeah, of course. I think uh, Palestine is, uh, <clears throat> you know, obviously a level above and or a few. And, you know, we, but for me, it's, uh, we know what they're about. It's, it's more about us and our mentality and attitude that we go on there and uh, give the nation everything. Thanks, Graham. Thank you. Let's take a look at the lines of Canaan now. Palestine, who arrived world number 96, of course, are chasing a very first World Cup appearance. Their coach, Makram Daboob, who is a former goalkeeping coach. He was their goalkeeping coach at the Asian Cup in 2019, becoming head coach in 2021, and he will lead them to January's Asian Cup as well. They topped their group on their way to qualifying for that. Uh, they defeated the Philippines, Mongolia and Yemen. They've got two Asian Cup appearances so far in 2015 and 2019. A Challenge Cup win and a bronze medal at the 90. Arab Games. Of course, he has been really vocal around how difficult it has been to get the squad together. He hasn't been able to select every single player as well um, with what is happening in the region too. Uh, and it was a nil-nil draw in their opening game against Lebanon. Uh, their, their goalkeeper was really, really strong in that one. He made an 89th minute save, actually, which is fantastic. But it, this is such a huge occasion for this team and what they could possibly do. It is. And look, this is, this is a free swing for them. Um, they're the underdogs and, you know, they've got nothing to lose here. Absolutely. And for Australia, just to build on what we did last game. All right. We are off to a short break. Do not go anywhere as the Socceroos, well, their road to the World Cup in 2026 continues right here on Network 10. Don't go anywhere. to the 2026 World Cup as the soccer is prepared to face Palestine at Jabba Al Ahmed International Stadium, an immense ground over 60,000 in capacity and the soccer have played here before a year and a half ago at the time they were on the road to qualify for the World Cup in Qatar, that in 2022. A very warm welcome to our viewers that join us from WA as well in the early hours of this morning for us over in the eastern states. This is Group 1, the group that Australia, of course, are in. They got off to a cracking start with that 7-0 result v Bangladesh. Uh, Lebanon and Bangladesh are actually in action right now. It's 1-1 currently, so this is a live ladder, of course. Team, at the end of the day, you want to finish top of this group at this stage of qualifying. A win tonight for the Socceroos, and they are round through to the third round, I should say. So 18 teams progress to this stage, made up of the top two countries from each of the nine groups. So these 18 are separated into three groups of six nations. The top two from each group is going to the World Cup in 2026. So in summary, what you can say is the Socceroos win tonight, they go through to the next round. If they finish top in their group, they're through to the World Cup. If they finish second in their group, they're through to the World Cup. That's what we want to do because there'll be six spots locked in at this point. Third and fourth place from the above group form two new groups. They play in a mini tournament. The top country in each group secures the two remaining spots and one spot is divided via an intercontinental playoff. As I can see, Alex Brosk and Luke Wilkshire's Com eyes roll in the back of their that head. All, the all we have to do, <laughs> win tonight. We go through and you top two in the next stage and we're through and then we don't have to do the long haul, of course, because we know how that has played out for the Socceroos every single time the last two campaigns. All right, let's get some more reaction now from over at Joe al Ahmed Stadium uh, now and hear from Craig Goodwin. Well, Craig, seven for the team the other night. Will we see the same aggressive approach this evening? Yeah, look, I think the, the game plan, um, although we'll have some tweaks, um, the main game plan won't, won't change for us. You know, we want to be aggressive uh, in our play. We want to play an attacking brand of football and we want to create chances. And I think that's the, the mindset we've got to have tonight. Um, but I do think it's going to be a very different game from the other night. You had the extra day in Melbourne, so two days here instead of three. How does that help you? How does that change the prep? Yeah, it's just trying something different um, to uh, obviously try and give the boys a bit more recovery time um, and obviously had the charter flight over and had treatment on there as well. So hopefully that um, has given us that extra bit of time with the, the short break in between games. But, you know, I think that aside, we just go in with the same mindset that, that we have and, 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 yeah, take it from there. A slight tweak to the front three. Martin Boyle comes in. What uh, are you expecting from him tonight? Yeah, look, I think people know what to expect from Martin when he comes into the team. And obviously, um, you know, we, we did without him in the first game, but he's uh, such a positive uh, and impactful player for us. So it's great for him to be back in the lineup, and I'm expecting big things. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.
That's right. Martin Bull did join the team in Q8. He had a knee that was flaring up. He wasn't going to make the journey all the way to Australia. What will you get with him? You'll get pace and you'll get all the good vibes all over the pitch. We saw Craig Good re return to the fold against Bangladesh a week earlier in the Saudi Pro League. He was facing Cristiano Ronaldo, which isn't too bad, considering he was playing at Adelaide United last season. There is truly, though, in the green and gold, no one that has a sweeter delivery, though, team. I mean, his delivery is the best. No doubt about it. Um, that left foot, you know, the delivery into the box, you know, any striker or any defender in Harry Suda would lo loves it, you know, the, the kind of balls that he puts in here. We saw this in the, the Bangladesh game and, he, you know, he puts it on a, a five-cent piece here. And when you've got the likes of Harry Suda, Burgess uh, in the box, you know, guys that can attack the ball, um, it's a dream. It's a dream, right? And he's, you know, he's only actually scored two goals for Socceroos, but the amount of assists he creates um, from set pieces is just phenomenal. And it is what you need. I mean, there's no point having guys like uh, Burgess and Suta in the box if the delivery isn't as good as what it is. So, look, it, it's, uh, it's great to have someone like him who can put the ball where you need it every time because sometimes in frustrating, in frustrating matches where you're not really creating match, it could be a set piece that decides it. And his delivery on set pieces, corners, at, um, through balls as well, everything all over the park has been phenomenal. You talk about set pieces. We're going to take a look at who's had the lion's share of goal scoring under Graham Arnold and seeing the big tall Harry Suter up there and we're talking about the deliveries from Craig Goodwin, what this tells me a story of is that Harry Suter and set pieces are pretty much Australia's main route to goal. Yeah, we've seen that look and, and you, you've got to play to your strengths. Arnie always talks about it, you, you know, you want to bring players in and play to their strengths. So when you've got someone like Harry Suter in the box and people that can attack the ball, Jackson Irvine's another one who's, who's, who's very good in the box. We get balls into the box. You've got goal scorers. You've got poachers. Jay McLaren poaches in the six-yard box. Mitchell Duke gets his lion's share of goals as well. No, he does. And, and it's no surprise, really, I mean, with how tall he is, we're, especially when we're playing against these, uh, these smaller countries where, where physically they're not anywhere near. And, and to be fair, there's not many countries that are physically anywhere near Harry Suter. But in these games in particular, we saw against Bangladesh how difficult. You had two guys trying to trying to climb up on top of him to stop him from hitting the ball. So it's no wonder he gets as many goals as he does. And, and the other boys, again, when we get into those areas, into, you know, the wide players overlapping and cutting back, we've got poachers that can score goals. So how does tonight play out, team? We saw how ruthless the Socceroos were against Bangladesh, but we saw that Bangladesh sat off and enabled the Socceroos to play. Tonight it's going to be quite different, right? It's going to be different. Look, um, you know, we said, spoke about Palestine and they've got a free swing. Um, they've got nothing to lose. They're going to be looking at the, the live lad if you look at that and, and go on, you know what, if we can try and get something out of this game, we, we can possibly go through this group. But I expect Australia to go on with it as well. Yeah, I, it may not be as comfortable as last time given the circumstances, but I do think Palestine as well will probably sit in a, a little bit more than what we saw Bangladesh uh, did the other night. So I think it will be tougher to create, um, you know, some chances. But again, I think we've got enough quality to, to get a few goals tonight. And I guess perhaps we can see changes at halftime. I know I'm already looking there. This is the final hit out ahead of the Asian Cup for the Socceroos as well, which kicks off for them in January. So it is Arnie's last opportunity to see some of his squad. Yeah, well, we've seen the changes that he's made now going into this game. So everyone's had an opportunity to put himself forward, uh, to put their best foot forward. And for sure, they'll be wanting to impress. You know, they'll be a motivation as well. They will indeed. Well, do not go anywhere. Grab your coffee, stay awake. We're off to a short break. And on the other side, it is kickoff to the Socceroos v Palestine. And your commentators, Simon Hill and Danny McBreen. qualifier that was originally scheduled for Ramallah in the West Bank but current circumstances make that impossible of course and so instead Australia go in search of points in much more familiar surrounds the Jabba Al Ahmad Stadium in Kuwait where of course they played four times back in 2021 during the COVID restrictions and won the lot. For Palestine it is the continuation of a football exile from their homeland that stretches back four years. But they will attempt to bring at least some joy to their people at a time of immense suffering. 
They are, on paper at least, a much better team than Bangladesh, having qualified now for three consecutive Asian Cups. And while the Socceroos should still be too good this evening, any complacency surely cannot be afforded tonight. 80,000 Palestinians live in Kuwait. And some of them are here tonight to cheer on their nation, even though it's uh, five o'clock on a weekday in terms of the kickoff time. As for their players, they've prepared with a three week camp in Jordan where over three million of their compatriots live. So perhaps it's a bit of a surprise that Kuwait was chosen as the venue. But a choice, nevertheless, that Australia will be grateful for given that they have twice lost World Cup qualifiers in Amman. They're going to make quite a noise, the Palestinian fans. It won't be uh, quite intimidating as it might have been in Jordan inside this 60,000 capacity venue. But the majority of the crowd will be in favour of the Lions of Canaan, who will look to build on the points they gained in the goalless draw against Lebanon in Sharjah. It's only the second ever meeting at senior level between the two teams. You might remember that they met in the group stage of the Asian Cup four years ago in 2019. Australia won that day by three goals to nil. And again, they start favourites here tonight. Let's pause then as the teams line up for the national anthems. Well, some of the Palestinian players, perhaps understandably, a little emotional as the two teams go through the pre-game ceremony. Palestinian players all wearing the traditional scarf of their homeland, the kufiya. Some of the officials too. And the golf has been not always 
a favourite visiting spot for Australia in the past. They've only actually lost eight World Cup qualifiers since they moved to Asia in 2006, and five of those defeats have come in the Middle East. They should be too good tonight, but the Palestinians, of course, will play heavily on emotion and well back from the stands. Here's the team news. Palestine make two changes from the 11 that started against Lebanon. Mohamed Yamin and Saleh Shihane drop down to the bench. Mohamed Rashid, who played against the Mariners for Bali United in the AFC Cup, starts in midfield. And there's a starting debut for winger Zayed Kunbar, who recently signed for Al Wadat in Jordan, but was back in Palestine within a few weeks. Oday Dabar is the team's star. He's already scored three times in Belgium after signing for Charleroi from Aruca in Portugal. Now, four changes for the Socceroos. Ryan Strain replaces Lewis Miller at right back. Aziz Bayic is in for Jordi Boss on the left. Kai Rolls resumes his partnership with Harry Sutter in the centre of defence. And Martin Boyle returns after missing the trip to Melbourne at the expense of Brandon Borello. It's a very experienced lineup on which Graham Arnold hopes will get the job done this evening. There's our match referee tonight, who is Kasim Al Hatmi, the 33 year old from Oman. And the two skippers, Matt Ryan, of course, of the Socceroos, and Musab Al Batat, his Palestinian counterpart. Mild temperatures for this game for this part of the world, 25 degrees and pitch is pretty decent even though Kuwait played India in their own World Cup qualifier here a few days ago which produced a bit of a shock with uh, India winning that game by a goal to nil. Two players, or sets of players, I should say, lining up on side of the centre circle for a mark of respect, which uh, I assume is due to the current circumstances in the region. So many people have lost their lives in this current conflict. Football almost seems to be an irrelevance, but it's a sense of normality, of course, for Palestine and a chance for them to wear their nation's jersey and represent their country with pride. And, of course, it's a similar story for Australia as well. And they must put to one side all of that emotion and focus on getting the job done. You'll notice that they're wearing their change strip of predominantly all blue today. First time since the World Cup win against Tunisia. Happy memories. Almost a year ago to the day now. Doesn't time fly? And we're already on the road back to the next World Cup, which will be held, of course, in Mexico and Canada and the United States in 2026. Palestine kickers off 
The second step on the road towards the World Cup. It might be a little bit more difficult than the first Daniel McBreen, but you'd expect that the Socceroos are good enough to get the job done tonight. Yeah, good evening, Simon. And everyone out there. There's been a lot of spoken about what's happening in the region, but it's about the next 90 minutes for both these teams now. And the Socceroos heavy favourites. But plenty of Palestine fans in the crowd to cheer on their team. This is Ode Daba, star striker from the team. Sayam takes over. This is Al Bata, the captain. He does like to get forward down that uh, right hand side. They play ostensibly a 4 3 3, but uh, both fullbacks are encouraged to get forward by coach Makram Dabu. Talking of which, there he is, the 50 year old Tunisian coach of Palestine. Former goalkeeping coach to the previous incumbent, Nouradine Ali, who took them to the Asian Cup in 2019. Here come Australia, looking to spring their first attack, and Martin Boyle is round the first challenge. Ryan Strain joining in, three in the middle. Mitch Duke was at the near post, but Palestine stand firm. Australia will come again through Ryan Strain. Oh, got the ball caught up between his feet. Touched by Metcalf and Australia are back on the front foot. Encouragement for Graham Arnold, who racks up 60 games over his two spells in charge of the national team tonight. The first Socceroos coach to do that. This is Bacchus, squared up for Aziz Bayic. He was looking to float it, I fancy, towards that far post, and it's spooned up in the air. Palestinian defender, likewise by Bayic. Now brought down by Abu Wada and Palestine looking to spring forward, but big Harry Souter is there. Well, I guess it's a really warning, warning signs for Palestine. In the attempt of the Australians. A quick break from one end to the other. And I'm sure that we'll see a dominant performance from the Socceroos. Australia looking to play in Conor Metcalf down that right hand side. He's done really well. Duke waiting in the middle, only partly away by Terminini. Reset through Boyle. Palestine survived that raid, and there's a little bit of holding by Harry Suta on Ode Dabar. Well, he did well there, didn't he, Ode Dabar? Good strength against Harry Suta. You see here, uses the body well, gets his body across. And that's not easy against such a big player. Ode Dabar did uh, make his name ready with club in Kuwait, Al Arabi, where he won both the championship and the golden boot in 2021. Very much a favourite with the Palestinian fans. For two years in Portugal, he's now in the top division in Belgium. It's going to be another free kick in favour of Palestine. Slightly clumsy challenge from behind on Atta Jaber. Mitch Duke doing the chasing back, but uh, catching the man rather than the ball. Well, he just got his foot in the way, didn't he? Mr. Bar was about to strike. So an early set piece opportunity for the Lions of Canaan. Tama. Say out standing over the kick. A wall of two just guarding that near post for Matt Ryan, just in case. And the 
Palestine supporters sensing a big chance for their team here. Farmer Sayam trying to steer it in towards that near post area and had a bit of pace on it. Matt Ryan forced to palm it behind for a corner. It was a relatively comfortable save in the end, but keeping Matt Ryan on his toes. Save in anger made by the Australian custodian and uh, the corner's ready to go, but the referee isn't. And Sayam has uh, jogged away and left it for Mohamed Rashid to deliver for Palestine in the all red strip. Sheets out swinging corner. And the shot wasn't a bad one, you know, from Mahmoud Abuwada. Short in stature, but uh, it is very best to get over the top of that. Well, it was a decent ball in, wasn't it? And a good attacking play. Martin Boyle putting his body on the line. And as the ball came back out, just. just Rather lob it over the top of Matty Ryan. Sees it comfortably over the bar. But if the Socceroos thought this was going to be all one-way traffic, Palestine shown them earlier that that may not be the case. And they're looking to press Matt Ryan to prevent him from playing out from the back, but he managed to find an option. And Ryan Strain is uh, playing with a bandage left wrist. to those noisy supporters. And we'll cheer every time Palestine get over the halfway line. Don't you worry about that. And here come their team. Well, if that's not enough, for this team to be lifted. I don't know what is. Great support here. And it's something that the Socceroos will have to weather. Always difficult playing away from home. It's a good header one as well by Zayed Kumba. Sitar calm under pressure. And Rolls slides it to Bayic. Palestine don't concede too many goals. The problem is, is that they don't score too many at the other end. Just three goals in the four column in their last six internationals, even though they've only conceded seven in the same period. Which is why so much rests on the shoulders of uh, that man, Ode Dabar, the first Palestinian to play professionally in Europe. Palestinian born. This is Suta. Looking for the run centrally of Craig Goodwin. Bacchus can't quite find his range, or Connor Metcalf. This is Abuwada. He is dispossessed. Metcalf won't quite get there. Hit of Mohamed Salah, who wanted the throw but isn't going to get it. It's a pretty robust challenge from Salah, but a fair one. Yep, he wasn't leaving any opportunity to get past, was he? Socceroos need to get on the ball and, and move it around a little bit, try and subdue the crowd. Strange throw. Touch inside the penalty area by but nobody there for the Socceroos. Played forward by Seiya. And the rolls. Always the favourite up against the bar. It's not been the most comfortable start for Graham Arnold's team. Let's see if they can settle things down here. Bayic. Behind him is Goodwin. 
Jackson Irvine. And Bacchus. Strain. Metcalf. Or rather Boyle, I should say. Looking for Metcalf, who has it now. He's going to have a go, Connor Metcalf. First save, forced out of Ravi Hamada in the Palestine goal, routine in the end. You know, you said a time and it's been a little bit scratchy for Australia. Not the most comfortable of opening 10 minutes. I'm sure Graham Arnold would be wanting them to settle into the game, a little bit more possession, move the Palestine team around. Look to work and work those openings. Palestine are actually unbeaten in 21 home or neutral ground qualifiers. 17 wins and four draws. It's late on Bayic. And the referee's going to have a word with Sayam. game Macca but uh, Palestine's approach does sort of remind me of Syria another team from the region they're not shy in doing the physical stuff when necessary well organized yeah and, and looking to press high as well put the Socceroos under pressure could easily be excused for sitting back and trying to soak up the pressure and really frustrate the Socceroos in that final third but Pushing forward, trying to press higher up the pitch. Ball by Albatat. Oh, Matt Ryan almost caught out by the bounce there. Could have been embarrassing. And Calf working it out towards Strain. He's under pressure and he's dallied too long. And Abawada has stolen the ball. Fortunately for Australia, it's straight at Ryan, but. Palestine offering their fans some early encouragement. Yeah, it's a great start from Palestine. The Socceroos don't look comfortable at all on the ball, do they? They just need to settle down, really find their groove in this game and, and move the ball around. Pick the pass, look for those midfield passes, your Jackson Irvines and Connor Metcalfs. Part of their game plan tonight was to try and turn what uh, was seen as being a rather square and flat back four of the Palestinians and get the likes of Goodwin and Boyle in behind, which they have done here. Craig Goodwin and Albertat not back in time. It's going to be a goal kick actually for Palestine, but the first little glimpse of Graham Arnold's game plan coming to fruition. Yeah, and a little calmer on that occasion. Is Bates in a higher position was able to roll Craig Goodwin in behind. And probably just balked, didn't he? An extra second there, which allowed Vatat to get in with the touch, win the goal kick. venue in Kuwait City, 60,000 capacity. I imagine Makram Dabu will be delighted with his team start. This is Terminini off the head of Bayic and out for a throw. We were told before the match they were expecting around 15,000 Palestinian fans. Well, they're making the sound of a lot more, aren't they? Really urging their team on. Hamadi to clear his lines. So, yeah. Good physical presence, a good outlet for Palestine to have with those on clearances and then a foul on Davar. It's Palestine the free kick. 
could win the offender. Quarter of an hour played in Q8 City. Tamer Sayam has uh, tested Matt Ryan in the Australian goal once. Abuwada firing just over. Conor Metcalf with Australia's only reply so far. Here's Boyle trying to get busy, but it was rather crowded. Break from a second time, and he's fouled. And will draw the free kick. That's all then of it. Just a little bit scrappy, hasn't it? The Socceroos. Pressure from Palestine, obviously contributing factor. Goodwin to try and find one of those pinpoint deliveries. The likes of Sutta and Duke, of course, obvious targets. Rolls is up there as well. Instead, they go along the floor. Change of angle for Craig Goodwin, perhaps. It comes now and out again by Mohamed Salah. Boyle. Corner for the Socceroos. That's good defending from Palestine again. The dangerous balls in. First one cleared, second one blocked, and this is a danger area for them. We saw Harry Sutter is in the foreground of your picture there. Hit the opening goal against Bangladesh from. Corner delivered by Craig Goodwin. Let's see if history is about to repeat. Goodwin's delivery. It has been repeated. Extraordinary. Goodwin to Sutar. Same result. 1 0 Australia. Harry Sutar has his 10th goal for his country in just his 22nd appearance. And it's that combination that's done the damage for Australia once again. Well, it's so hard to defend against, isn't it? Look at big Harry Sutar. He just holds his ground big and strong. And the delivery from great Craig Goodwin is on a dime. Hits it right on the forehead of Harry Sutar, who has the easiest of tasks to just nod it home. And it was mentioned before the game that that was such an outlet for the Socceroos. And it's come to fruition again. Wonderful delivery from Craig Goodwin. joins some illustrious company with uh, that tenth international goal. Paul Wade and Kevin Muskets, no less, on the all-time list. And the fact that it's come in so few internationals speaks volumes as to the threat that he poses from those set-piece situations. Well, he's just so hard to defend against, isn't he? And we saw on that occasion, he just held his ground. He didn't need to run, doesn't need to create the space to move into. He just uses his frame and his strength. And when you've got a player like Craig Goodwin to deliver, it makes it very difficult for the opposition. Palestine looking to strike back. Corner whipped in low towards the near post. It's tidy work by Musa al -Batat. Head off Martin Boyle and a test for Matty Ryan. One that he always looked likely to pass. And a quick release to try and get Craig Goodwin moving forward. You can tell that he's frustrated with his inability to stick hold of the ball. And instead, it's Saldana. Strain, straining if you like, to get that goal side of Sayam. This is Mohamed Rashid out for Al Bata. They've already got hold of the cross and uh, up and away by Irvine. Tananini battling with Duke. No 
no foul, even though Palestine wanted one. Well, now there's a problem with Ryan Strain for Australia, but play will continue. High rolls saw the ball out. But Ryan Strain looks to be in quite a lot of discomfort here. And attention is immediately called for. Yeah, this didn't look good. He went down before the challenge even came in. I'm not too sure. He's twisted the knee as he fell. And there are some rather worried Australian faces around Ryan Strain. Let's have another look at it. Is it the groin? Looks yeah, like he, could be. Yeah, grab the maybe the left groin there. Just maybe the foot just not grabbing in the ground as he would have liked. And he went down straight away. And the player falls to the turf with uh, no obvious contact. You do worry whether it's a serious soft tissue injury. He looked to be writhing around in pain, Ryan Strain. Making just his second start for his country this evening. Australia will continue with ten men for the time being. Lewis Miller, of course, on the bench as uh, the obvious replacement, should he be required. Well, I think we heard Graham Arnold straight away yell out, Lewis, off you go, get warmed up. particular hurry with the throw. Boyle left in a fraction short for Metcalf with the return. Backers biting into the back of his opponent. There's the view from uh, the blimp or the drone. Looking out over Q8 City. on his feet but Lewis Miller is already on so Graham Arnold forced into that early change and right back taking no chances with the injury to Ryan Strain which is a pity for the St Mirren fullback he's uh, had a good start to the season again in the Scottish Premier League and earned his starting spot tonight but it's only lasted a fraction over 20 minutes well let's just hope that's nothing Two on toward, maybe just a slight strain. Information of that change. Lewis Miller on for his fourth cap. Playing in behind his club teammate. Martin Boyle down that right-hand side. So at the very least, there shouldn't be any problems with their understanding. Not at all. And he loves to get forward as well, doesn't he, Lewis Miller? Kai rolls. Irvine. to Harry Sutter, whose goal divides the two teams. Fraction too heavy for Miller. I think Harry Sutter thought Lewis Miller was going to take off and go forward there. Just played it in front of him. Lewis Miller had just stopped his run. Set long and out of play by Saldana for Palestine, who is those from the Palestinian diaspora plays for Union San Felipe in Chile, which uh, is the country of his birth, but many Palestinians living in that part of the world. We've got a club in the domestic competition called Palestino. The referee got an inadvertent touch there, but play will go on. As Palestine retain possession. So 
Danya. Comfortable for Sutta. Chested down by Bacchus, but uh, miscontrolled by Miller. All the way through to Rami Hamadi. Australian defence have pushed up to squeeze the pitch. Seeking, but uh, not finding his teammate. And instead, Palestine will cross, but uh, say um, never looked likely to get there. Good win, and look at Aziz Bayic bombing forward. It's almost a very good take by Conor Metcalf, almost but not quite. Bayic now out of position. No foul by Sutta. Backers to try and thread it through. Not sure Mitch Duke was entirely anticipating that. And he'll float the ball into the box. Uh, Albatat chests it back to his goalkeeper. Well, the Socceroos have really struggled to get anyone in midfield, haven't they? On the ball, facing forward. So we have another look at the goal there. Look at the strength. <laughs> Makes it so difficult. Harry Suta, look, just holds his ground. Gets the arm out and creates the space, and as we said before, the delivery from Craig Goodwin, absolutely sublime. I'll tell you what, his marker, Mohamed Salah, is not small by any means, but having stood next to Harry Sutta myself, and I'm six foot three. You've grown a couple of inches, have you? He... <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, he looked like Snow White, stood <laughs> next to one of the dwarfs next to me. Yeah, he's a big man, isn't he? In these positions here, that Australia have really struggled to move that ball through that midfield area. Lots of pressure from the Palestinian midfielders. They've been forced to really go round or try to go long. Good win. Headed away by Mohamed Salah. Irvine has a look. Bacchus didn't need to. here for Keanu Bacchus. Australia trying to pick their way through the defensive lines. It's a poor ball though by Keanu Bacchus. Miller clattered into by Zayed Kunba. Sutta. Irvine. Space is there, as you're pointing out to me, Daniel McBreen, for the Australians to exploit, but just a little bit slow in doing so. Well, we're seeing Craig Goodwin. Martin Boyle come inside, and two fullbacks push on high. And that brings Jackson Irvine and Keanu Bacchus a little deeper as well. This is Miller. Bacchus. Irvine for rolls. Now they do find that little pocket of space. Goodwin, tempting ball in. And the shot from Metcalf was on target. Comfortable enough for Rami Hamadi. But they worked that quite well. Yeah, that was good movement from the Socceroos. That's where you want to get Craig Goodwin into those areas. We know his delivery is fantastic. It wasn't a bad ball either. 
Here's Goodwin again. Just overran it. Nipping him was Arto Jarbet. Kumbar a little bit isolated, but he gets the throw off Sutta. Done yet? Salah going cross field, looking for his captain. Will be a Palestine throw. The problem for coach Makram Daboub is where are those goals going to come from? Just one they've scored in the last five matches overall. And a 2 1 defeat in Oman, scored by Mahmoud Abuwada. A couple of goalless draws in that sequence. It's the most difficult part of the game. And the strength not enough. A little ripple of excitement amongst the Palestinian fans, which quickly dies down as Saldani gives a bad ball. And that's a foul by Sayup. Well, that's turning into a good battle on that right-hand side, isn't it? Lewis Miller he doesn't mind a battle, doesn't mind getting using the body. Sayup. A little bit too eager. It's one of the overseas-based contingent, of which there are ten in the Palestine squad. He plays his club football in Thailand for Pratshuat, who are bottom of the Thai top league. Here he is again, Sayam. Ode Dabar. Bata was a tempting ball in, and Sutal was underneath it. Goodwin can't stick hold of it. Ode Dabar again, lifting it into the box. Bounces off the face, I think, of Harry Sutal. There are appeals for handball by the Socceroos, and those appeals are heeded. Well, he scored a goal at the other end, but Harry Sutal was big and strong there again. First ball came in. And this was the shout for handballs. You can see in the clearance there. Kumbar couldn't quite get it there past Harry Suter and then couldn't really do too much about it, but the referee says, yep, he paid a free kick. Paul ricochets onto his hand so quickly, doesn't it? I do wonder if that had been... Australian defender would a penalty have been awarded even though the arm was away yeah. from the body anyway it's just turning into a bit of a battle this at the moment isn't it I'm not sure Graham Arnold and his team would have expected this what the move to Asia was made to do to provide these sorts of challenges hostile environments long journeys Australia in the course of the journey have dealt with it pretty well really Boyle there wasn't much intent to go for the ball from Mohammed Rashid Friendship's a little bit too late, Mohammed. I think as, actually as they fell, they may have come down on boy. You see, it kept, it's a definite foul there, but I think just the foot might catch here on the head. Oh. We may never know. You watch Mohammed Rashid at close quarters, of course, Maki. You were in Bali, watching uh, the Mariners against Bali United. 
AFC Cup. Let's see how this develops. Lewis Miller penalised. Yeah, that was another tough, tough occasion for Australian football. What you say for you? It's a tough trip. <laughs> <laughs> Scratchy opening, 10 minutes or so. Australia have certainly settled into the game. Lynch with that throw into space for Sutar. Now Lewis Miller. to try and pick their moment. So, no risk football, just for the time being. Bacchus with Rashid at his back. Now they look to hit down the flanks, and they're in behind through Martin Boyle. Might have got himself, I thought, Martin Boyle. Instead, looked to square it to a teammate. Yeah, it was a great ball from Keanu Bacchus for the run of Boyle. You, Simon. That was a good opportunity. He takes his first touch inside to maybe just have a strike across the goal there. Started with the challenge. And Hamada cleaning up. for Metcalf, not quite. This is Saldana. Rashid. Al Bata. Scoop back to his teammate from Rami Hamadi. Goalkeeper in uh, golf circles. It's a record for clean sheets for Palestine all time, but uh, won't add to his tally tonight, of course. Saldana. Uh, Jaba. Dabar just dropping off the front line to try and involved in the game. Saldana found a little bit of space, Palestine. Space they could exploit. Ryan to clear up field. Rashid, the little Lifted ball over the top. This is Thomas Sea. He said it's a slightly off balance when he went to deliver that cross. And that, sadly for Palestine, was fatal. I'd like to see the Socceroos be a little bit more expansive in their press. Move forward as a unit and press the Palestinians a little higher rather than sitting in that mid to low block at times. Pressure on early and win that ball higher up the pitch. Sutta. Bacchus. Irvine. Good win with a bit of time here to get the head up. Sam got back goal side to make the block. Irvine. That's the right idea. 
But uh, it's too smart. Yeah, that's great defending. Read the situation well. Little dummy to run through. to now for Harry Sutar's opening goal which uh, came on 18 minutes still very much in the contest touch off Irvine this is Musa Albata good foraging from Bacchus Again, Irvine. That's his Bayic, who is uh, our most experienced outfield player in the soccer squad. Matt Leckie has more caps, rather Matt Ryan, I should say. Matt Leckie, of course, not part of this squad. Six for the Australian goalkeeper tonight. Puts him uh, behind the legendary Alex Tobin on the all-time list. Good win. The break for Duke. Maybe off the outside of the boot and straight into the arms of Hamadi. from Australia to win the ball back high up the pitch. Heeding your words, Danny and McBreen. <laughs> a little pirouette too from Boyle. Miller with the long throw. Duke got a touch, this is Metcalf. Two in the box for Conor Metcalf, and uh, it's deflected behind off Mohamed Salah for another Australian corner. Let's see if Goodwin and Sutar can repeat their magic. Well, he'll definitely be the target, won't he? Harry Sutar, probably go and stand himself right inside that six-yard box. Ask that man, Craig Goodwin, to just put it on his head. And let me do the rest. Well, they can stick as tight as they want to Harry Suto, and they've got about three players around him, which of course could free up space for others. Harry Suto won't mind who scores the goals as long as they come. Salah has been charged with the responsibility, thankless task though it is. And keeping tabs on Australia's giant number 19. Marcus involved in a little bit of push and shove with Ode Dabar. It's a fair bit going on in there. Now we're finally ready. Sutar jockeying for position. Goodwin delivers. And it's away at the near post from Atar Jaba for Palestine. Know where the threat is. We saw that last match out, didn't we, against Bangladesh? Two players trying to mark Harris Utah. Same happening again. As you say, Simon, that can free up space for another Socceroo. No foul by Albata. It's a good challenge from Rolls. Able to be made as well. stoppage time of which there's going to be a couple of minutes still time
time for Palestine to make inroads here. It's Albata, and it's behind off Aziz Bayic, and Palestine will have a corner in first half stoppage time. Well, he's having a, a good game, isn't he, Albata, the captain? He's getting forward, balls into the box, he's defended well at the other end. His team in corner here. Which Mohamed Rashid will take short. Al Batat looking to pick out a teammate. Big chance here. Matt Ryan with a miraculous save to deny Tema Sayab. It fell so invitingly to Palestine's number nine. But Matt Ryan made himself big and strong and made a crucial stop. That he did indeed. Looked for all money, it was going to be a Palestinian goal there. Rashid's corner, deeper this time. Java can't reach it. Back by Saldana, out again by Metcalf. And Palestine finishing the first half strongly. Here's that man, Siam. Threaded ball through. I'll tell you what, if that first touch goes towards goal, rather than away off Ode Dabar, Australia are in big trouble. Yeah, that's a couple of huge warnings. Signs for the Socceroos. And as long as this remains at 1-0, the Palestinians will see that they've got some hope. Well, that is the half-time scoreline. Harry Sutar with a crucial goal, just as he did against Bangladesh, opening the score in from Craig Goodwin's delivery. But Australia are mighty grateful to Matt Ryan for a big save in first half stoppage time to deny Tema Seam. Nobody picked him up. Australia, their defenders pushed out. That's why Matt Ryan is so highly rated. That is a miraculous save to protect Australia's lead, which they hold at the interval by the slenderest of margins, thanks to Harry Suttar and their captain. Half-time in Kuwait City, Palestine nil, Australia won. We're off to a quick break on the other side. Join Tara Rushton, Luke Wilcher and Alex Brosk for their thoughts on the first half. In 2026 over in Kuwait at Jabba Al Ahmed International Stadium against Palestine. 5 pm kickoff, their time, early hours of this morning here in Oz. And well, it's not exactly what they dished up, the Bangladesh. Slightly flatter, slightly duller, you've got to say, Luke Wilkshire and Alex Brosk. It wasn't quite what we were expected. 1 0 is a score at half time, so the Socceroos are in the lead, which is a positive, but they've been given a couple of almighty scares. They have, and look, it's a, a good reminder as well. I think we tend to forget sometimes heading into these campaigns of just how difficult it is, these games away in, um, in Asia. So I think, look, it's probably no real surprise. The, the pitch doesn't look great, it's very bobbly, the, the ball isn't moving as freely as we'd probably want. Um, but even still, look, I think it, it was our go-to that got us the goal uh, in the end in uh, Craig Goodwin, delivery to Suta, got us underway. But even still, it's been pretty flat. It is exactly the same way that the Socceroos opened their scoring against Bangladesh on Thursday night at Amy Park. We spoke about him, Harry Suta, and the aerial threat, the threat in the box that he is, and that delivery from Craig Goodwin. He is, it's just on point. Look, you, you see Harry there, he's, he's, he's been man marked. He's, he's trying to grapple with the guy, but he, he's the presence that he is, the ball's on the money. He doesn't have to do a lot to it. He just guides it in and does what he does. And again, it's the go-to. Because up until then, uh, we hadn't created pretty much anything. And it was probably Palestine who started the better. Um, but that's the difference at the moment, is, is those set pieces. How do you even mark Harry Suta? His 10th goal in his 22nd international appearance. Harry Suta has been immense. He's looked the most likely. He's very hard to miss in the box when you look at who's having such a big impact on the first half. And this, of course, is the opportunity to see this this side before the Asian Cup campaign takes place. So looking at the Subway subs, who's going to come on and make an impact? Who's going to change things, turn the screws in the second half team? 
We need a little bit more life about us, that's for sure. Lackluster, I think, is, is the best way to put it. Um, look, maybe you can get someone like Boss coming coming in at left back, giving us a bit more impetus going forward on the, on the left side. And someone like Borella, who you know is going to give you energy up top. Look, those two perfect. I think maybe Sammy Silvera as well, who can come on and provide something different, that sort of direct, um, you know, carefree sort of style that he has. Yangi as well, another presence up front to support Duke. Um, so either of those four could come on and change the game, really. Maybe something just to energise what's happening over there in Q8. All right, don't forget, this is a football that is heading your way. This being tonight, the last hit out before the Socceroos kick off the Asian Cup against India, Saturday the 13th of July. You can catch all of the Asian Cup live and exclusive across Network 10 and Paramount Plus. The Matildas are also back in action against Canada. Of course, they met at the most recent World Cup. That will take place next month in December, being the Matildas v Canada. So we cannot wait for that one as well. And yeah, you've got to catch it right here on Network 10 in December. Don't miss it. Cuts it in, Adriana Leon. What a hit! What a great goal! Canada take the lead with a rocket into the top corner. Back to Kerr who cuts it for Bauer. Less than two and a half minutes on the clock, and Sam Kerr sets up Mary Fowler to give the Matildas the dream start. Well, Socceroos are in the lead, 1 0. Well, just, just by the fingertips of Matt Ryan in the purple there. He needs a little introduction. And Tamer Sam, the number nine from Palestine, well, he fired that warning shot. He fired one very early in the game as well. And you can see that they are incredibly dangerous. And man of the match, man of the first half so far has got to be Matt Ryan. A big moment of concern, Ryan Strain. So he started this one at right back and within 20 minutes, it looked semi-innocuous team, but it has been confirmed from over in Q8 that he has strained his groin. Hopefully, hopefully it's not too serious. It doesn't look good. Um, look, it's very innocuous. Um, obviously, no, no challenge there. He's gone down in a lot of pain. Um, and you see here, it's, it's come from nothing. Um, but, yeah, it's not a good look. And he didn't play the first game, so mm. he hadn't played minutes. To, for that to happen is a, a big blow for him. He's traversed the globe and he's lasted 20 minutes on the pitch. Harry Suter, the big bopper in the middle. Aerial jewels. Six out of six, 100 <laughs> percent Alex Frost. No surprise. No, no surprise with any of it. Even the amount of touches he's getting. Obviously, we're uh, you know moving the ball around the back a lot, not really getting much penetration into midfield and, and creating chances out of it. So, in games like this, he's going to get a lot of touches. Um, thankfully, one of them was the goal that we needed. Uh, but yeah, if not for Matt Ryan, and I guess an, a highlight of, of how important he is, he may not touch the ball all that much. But you know. As long as this game stays 1-0 and they're in with a chance, they'll keep fighting and we're going to need him again, possibly. It was so vital in the stoppage time moments. What do you make of the Kai Rolls harry Suter partnership at the back? Look, it's been a great partnership. We saw in the World Cup, um, obviously, Burgess has now come into the frame. I know. Um, which, which yeah. you know, Arnie talks about <laughs> having that competition for places. Um, having two natural left-sided centre-backs is, is a fantastic option to have. Um, harry Suter, yeah, is his own, but... Um, he touched on it, Matt Ryan just shows that, you know, you've you got to stay switched on and focused the whole 90-plus minutes. Absolutely tough place to go and play. All right, don't go anywhere. Kick-off is next. All those Palestinian fans still full of hope and perhaps even expectation on the back of a rather rousing finish to the opening 45 minutes, but uh, that team does trail at the interval thanks to Harry Suttar's goal. He's now scored in three consecutive internationals for the Socceroos, but uh, not the most fluid performance in the opening half. And, uh, Graham Arnold will no doubt be reminding them of the game plan at half-time. If they do manage to win tonight, Australia then will be top by some four points because in the other game, Bangladesh managed to jag a draw against Lebanon in their game in Dakar. And a 
course, not just uh, about the World Cup qualifiers, but uh, Australia got a big tournament on the horizon as well. Daniel McBreen just 52 days before the Asian Cup starts against India. And we will want to go into that tournament on the back of two wins in these opening World Cup qualifiers. They are well placed to do that, but. Uh, like to see a little bit more from them in this second half. Yeah, you're right, Simon. Uh, they have done well in the last match. They are leading 1-0 at half-time here, but I'm sure Graham Arnold would have said, come on, we need a little bit more here. We want a good performance before we head into that tournament. Let's sign off with a good performance here, a great second half. As you say, I'd like to see them a little bit more adventurous on the press. And also to ball midfield triumphant and get them facing forward and move that uh, Palestinian defense around and that's for Palestine who are re-entering the field of play now uh, defending that uh, long unbeaten run in Asian qualifiers 21 matches home or on neutral territory they actually played a home game since 2019 and they've got some great backing in the stands tonight and they thought they had a goal didn't they in first half stoppage time but for the heroics of Matty Ryan which kept Australia's lead intact doesn't look like there's been any changes made by either coach at the break so we await Kasim al Hatney's whistle which duly arrives and Australia get us back on the way leading as they do Goal to nil, thanks to Harry Sutar's tenth at international level. And, uh, a little bit more control of the game perhaps required. They didn't start particularly well, Australia. First ten minutes were a wee bit scratchy. Palestine are no bugs. As mentioned, they've qualified now for three consecutive Asian Cup tournaments, even if yet to win a game regional tournament finals are a handy outfit this next 45 will require the utmost concentration for the Socceroos well they've defended well haven't they against the Socceroos we should break forward here but we've seen how both the Socceroos fullbacks push high Martin Boyle very good one coming inside a little bit trying to get them high and wide to get balls in behind but they haven't really got into too many opportunities in those areas great good one one or two opportunities to get balls in but on the whole has been defended quite well Rashid couldn't reach the ball and Goodwin was trying to steer it into the path of Mitch Duke it's not too much change out of uh, Mohamed Salah and Michel Termanini the centre-back pairing for Palestine Stopping Harry Sutter, of course, is a completely different problem from set pieces. Here he is, loving playing for his country. Doesn't get too many opportunities, unfortunately, for his club. And he's played just the one game in the championship for Leicester City. He says he wants to stay in January and fight for his spots. Not that he'll be doing that in January, of course. He'll be at the Asian Cup. Sometimes it can be the easy option, isn't it, to go and find games elsewhere, but states he wants to try and break back into the team. The team doing very well. It's a foul on Lewis Miller. As he uh, also pointed out, Leicester are top of the championship in England, so he can hardly complain that yeah. the manager's making the wrong decision. Well, that's it. When the team's doing well, and they're winning games, it's very hard to change the lineup, particularly. Your back four you like to keep as stable as possible. That's Kai Rolls, his central defensive partner. Duo back in tandem today. A couple of opportunities for Sandro Giacati and Cameron Burgess. Good ball by Sutter. Touch back by Boyle. Jackson Irvine quite find his range. Metcalf 
first to the loose ball. And Australia will claim the throw. Well, we've seen a couple of balls like that, haven't we, from the Socceroos that we saw there from Jackson Irvine. Just miscuing it. I just wonder if the pitch maybe is a little bit uneven and just as they go to strike the ball, they're getting under it. it can make life a little difficult if that is the case. challenge of playing in Asia. Ryan sprays the ball out towards Lewis Miller. Gets ball stuck between his feet, but somehow he's managed to come away with it and retain his balance, or at least initially anyway. They had a couple of chops at him there, didn't they, Palestine, before Rashid eventually succeeded in bringing him to ground. Well, he's been in a running battle with two or three Palestinians since he's come on the field, and you see him just saying to the referee, how many times a good contest. Craig Goodwin gets the throw. Doing really well for his new outfit in Saudi Arabia. Five goals in eight games for Al Wada. Enjoying playing in a league that, of course, is now full of global superstars. Cristiano Ronaldo, Roland Kante, Riyad Mahrez. Back as the offender there. Obstructing his opponent. You see here, just to the left of your screen, just a little push, not much in it really. There's no real need. Let's get in a of disciplinary trouble for his club side St Mirren. Six yellow cards in 11 matches in the SPL in Scotland so far this season. Keanu Bacchus. So that they got away from him there. Unfortunate ricochet of Conor Metcalf. This is Ode Dabar. Saldana. Bar again. All very scrappy by the near touchline. De Bar comes away with it. Atar Jaba gives the ball away. And Australia will look to spring forwards. Goodwin's only option was Mitch Duke. Irvine. Goodwin. Back for Irvine. Good sliding challenge though. Atar Jaba. Good defensive midfield play by Keanu Bacchus. Alert to that danger and getting quickly back goal side of Saeed Kumba. This game is far from safe for Australia. This is Al Batat. Terminini for Mohamed Salah. Take by attack. We went for the early cross. We're taking it on a few more meters. Well, they saw that he had three teammates inside the box. He wanted to get it in quickly. He was well defended on that occasion. Silent. Uh, Palestine's best opportunities in the first half. Run out of play off Mitch Duke. It's tough going for the Socceroos. Clip into the box for Mohamed Rashid. And it's going to be a corner for Palestine. It's a good start to the second half in Palestine, isn't it? Pressure being turned on the Socceroos. To get players forward as well to support. Mohamed Rashid again with the corner. People back for Al Bata. Sayem. Al 
Obuara. Suta couldn't reach it. It's a speculative effort from Atar Jaba. Way over the top of the crossbar. Why not from that area, though? Simply out into a dangerous area, got himself set. And just got under the ball. Plays his club football in Azerbaijan for Nechi Baku. He's actually a former captain of the Israel under-21 team. He changed his national allegiance, which, uh, as you can understand, didn't particularly go down too well. It took him two years to get his travel visa. Overseas, where he's coached by a certain Adrian Mutu. This Tempest Frey, just a little. Well, it's been brewing a little bit down this near side, hasn't it? And Lewis Miller. That was a physical battle. Just getting a little out of hand on that occasion. to Boots in the process here. There's all sorts going on. Pushing and shoving and jersey tugging. Bacchus. Rolls for Suta. Gonna quite reach Aziz Bayic on that left hand side. Terminini almost running out of real estate on that. Uh, on side of the pitch and an infringement on Jackson Irvine who's eager to get on with things trying to inject some urgency into the Socceroos and Martin Boyle trying to steal him behind away by Salah for now Duke looking to recycle it stumble by Goodwin Again, the rather scrappy nature of the game at the outset of the second half Continuing. Well, it has been really hard for the Socceroos to put any real combinations together, hasn't it? Particularly in that front third, such as the nature of the defensive effort from Palestine and some of the conditions as well. This is Lewis Miller who's Broken free of those shackles just for the moment. And a credit really to Palestine's organisation. They uh, weren't able to play in the October window due to the ongoing troubles back in their homeland, but uh, that three-week camp in Jordan has obviously helped with their cohesion. Yeah, definitely very organised in defence. I think maybe bit more proactive in their press as well which may have taken the Socceroos a little bit by surprise who may have thought they would sit a little deeper it'd be more a case of breaking down a team in that final third nowhere to go for Craig Goodwin and instead it's Palestine who spring forward Sayam Ode Dabar Mohamed Rashid is furthest forwards can they fashion an opening here Ata Jaba off balance and ultimately off target was a nice break, wasn't it? It was Mohamed Rashid who made a great run into the box. You see the initial pass here, and look at him going through the middle there, just once it rolled across. Harry Sutar's big frame, probably just enough to stop the cross coming in. And when the shot finally did come in, it's not what was wanted. It's a little bit off balance and off target.
points required from Matt Ryan on that occasion. Craig Goodwin getting a fraction too tight on Musab Al Bata, the Palestinian captain. There, isn't he? Just catches the toe. But, uh, he's had a good game tonight. Impressed by him. He's one of the uh, domestic based players, plays for Shabab Aldaria. So, only returned to Palestine this year. He's been playing in Egypt with the eloquently named Ceramica Cleopatra. Well, got plenty of distance behind that throw to pick out Duke. Miller losing out to Jarbet. Good cover provided by Jackson Irvine. An hour played. Australia know they're in a game here. Not had things all their own way. Backers to ping it out towards Lewis Miller on the right. Metcalf. State of play with just under half an hour to go now. Miller's lost out. Was there an infringement there by Sutter? The answer is no. Zayn like Kumbar going to ground a little bit too easily. Bata almost able to steal. It's well played by Craig Goodwin. change for the Socceroos, Brandon Borello and uh, Geordie Voss to be introduced by Graham Arnold. Tim Boyle and Craig Goodwin, the two who make way. to see Martin Boyle get the early mark, given he's still feeling the after-effects of that uh, injury. Sustained while well playing for Hibs against Kilmarnock. Yeah, always a worry for club managers as this plays out. Here's Conor Metcalf, big chance this for Australia, but he delayed too long. And ultimately, the whistle goes in favour of Palestine. You were just waiting for him to Pull the trigger there, Conor Metcalf. Yeah, well, it opened up. It hasn't done so for him so far in the match. The ball was played inside from Miller. You can see here, plenty of space. Gets the head up. Just thought, just strike it with the left foot. Looked like he wanted to come back on the right, and then the moment was lost. Just wanted that extra touch, didn't he, Conor Metcalf? Changes by Australia. Boss on for his sixth appearance for his country. Strangely enough, he'll uh, be in action for his club side in Belgium, Westerlo against Charleroi next. 
It's Ode de Bar's club. Set forward by Suta. Nice touch. Two nice touches, in fact. They've worked this beautifully, Australia's good save to deny Brandon Borello by Rami Hamadi. And that was some of Australia's best work in an attacking sense all night. Yeah, beautiful interplay there. He's looked sharp since coming on straight away. Great combination. Look at the run, gets the eyes up, looks to find that bottom corner. Hamada with a good save down to his right. But just a little spark there from the Socceroos. Craig Goodwin to deliver a corner kick, of course, now. So Connor Metcalf has taken over those duties. Sutar waits to make his move. He's got Mitch Duke there as his bodyguard as well. Kumbar and Salah as ever out to greet them. Delivery can Connor Metcalf produce here. Sotar's got away. Free header for Jordan Boss. And it crashes back off the crossbar. Still alive for Australia. Before it's eventually hooked away by Atar Jaba. And Lewis Miller will prevent any counter from Ode de Barba. Jordi Boss. Oh so close to getting his first international goal but maybe sealing the deal for the Socceroos. Well both substitutes having an impact. Bruno Barello was involved in winning the corner. Jordan Boss found himself pretty much unmarked on the six yard box and smashed it against the crossbar. As it is, the game remains in the balance. The changes have had the desired effect for Graham Arnold's team. Irvine. Morello lost his balance, but gains a free kick. And here's another look you see. Jordy Boss he just ghosted in, didn't he, towards that six yard area. Everyone's thinking about Harry Sutar at the near post and he'll be a little disappointed he didn't hit the target there. Free header six yards out. Did the keeper maybe get a fingertip to it? Difficult to know for sure. So much power behind it, but again, that's the presence of Harry Sutar, yeah. isn't it? Well, we saw there on that replay from behind the goal. As Harry Sutar made his run to the near post. There was about four or five red shirts circling him. No one was paying attention to that middle area, just ghosting in at the back, Geordie Boss. Back from Davoub knows his team. Might well have been out of this contest. Perhaps that's why he's going to look to his bench, Ode Karub. He's perhaps one of those to be summoned shortly. where Australia just gained a, a bit more control in this second half. Or am I being too generous, yeah, Macken? I would say fractionally. <laughs> I think the production of Borello and Jordi Boss may have sparked a little bit more movement in that front area. There hasn't been too much joy in the midfield today for Australia. Lada's ball is behind his captain, Albertat. The midway point of the second half. Five goals arriving a fraction late on Ode Dabar. There was some contact. He's certainly making the most of it. Ode Dabar, let's have another look. I think that would have hurt actually. Kyra Olds just sort of snuck into the side of Kyra Olds, but here's another look. You can see there all the red shirts going towards the near post for Harry Sutar and Geordie Boss really 
Should have hit the target there. Nobody picked up his run. Rodeo Debar just pointing out the graze on the leg. There's no doubt he was caught by Kai Rolls. At least Kai Rolls, not the key. He's picked up the game's first caution. Defensive line for Australia. Now they'll drop. And it pops for Amuwada. Al Mata still plenty forward for Palestine. Sitar imperious in the air again. Down by Rashid. And Australia a little slow to push out. Wanting the pressure perhaps. Big chance here for Palestine. Flag was up. Against Tamar Seya. And Australia are grateful for that. Well, they are. And you said it, Simon, they were very slow to get out, to get pressure on the ball. And when the ball did come back in, they were second to it. Look at the red shirts there. Good winner, the header there. Most of that just tries to play it around the corner. And just drifted, drifted into an offside position. We're in the last, coming into the last 20 minutes of the match now, and it's that time where. Australia really needs to start thinking about killing off the game. Brandon Brello's had one good chance. Jordy Boss has hit the crossbar. Still the margin remains at one. Lewis Miller is asking how he could be penalised there, but uh, that is the verdict. International will be back in this part of the world, a friendly against Bahrain on the 6th of January before their Asian Cup quest starts in Doha against India. Subsequent group games to come against Syria and Uzbekistan. They want six points from six to start off their World Cup campaign. And although it's not all been sweetness and light for the Socceroos so far this evening, they do still lead. Sweetheart couldn't get there in time. Big chance this for Palestine. Abuwada, Ode Debar, and he fires it wide. It is going to be a corner, but Australia was stretched there. They sold Harry Suttar a bit short, and he couldn't quite get there ahead of Abuwada. And Palestine almost making Australia pay for some sloppy defending. Well, it was a sloppy pass out that initiated it. And then, as you say, Simon, some sloppy defending as well. The longer this game goes at 1-0, the more and more Palestine seem to be gaining confidence. Ode Karoub has been sent on by uh, Palestine. We'll confirm who's come off for him in a moment. Meantime, Sayam's corner. Met by Mitch Duke at the near post. The throw-in was quick and accurate, but uh, the cross, unfortunately for Australia, wasn't. And he's been handy tonight, hasn't he, Tamer Sayam? Yeah, he has. He's got himself into a couple of positions that have worried the Australians. Particularly that one just before half-time that Matty Ryan made a great save. Mohamed Rashid is the player who's had his number called. It's a like-for-like -like change. One midfielder for another. 30-year-old from one of the biggest clubs in Palestine, Halal Al-Quds. 
is, on for his 23rd cap. There's a brother who's also a professional, Leith, who plays as a winger for Marcos Balata, also in the West Bank Premier League. Zaid Kumba. Another corner. Pressure building just a little bit. He's toiled well as well, isn't he up front? Kumba tonight, the Palestinians. Palestine throw. Saldana to take. Movement and got it ultimately from Ode Debar. In comes the cross. Nice drop for Arta Javert. Now starting to ask the question the Lions of Canaan. Al Fadai, as they're known in Arabic. has been a, a good examination of Australia's credentials in this group. You can see that both just in an offside position. Jabba, the culprit. It's a good period of play for the Palestinians, asking the questions of the Australian defence. That ball needed to stick for Brennan Barello. Instead, he's given away a foul. Quarter of an hour to go in Q8 City. Sutar's goal still the difference. They've come close to adding to their lead. Haven't been able to do so. Bainch to clear his lines. Getting involved. Now Terminini. Salah. Dick forwards. Looking for Ode Dubai. And Barello stretching, but again, not quite able to reach it. Australia just can't get their foot on the ball at the moment. to Abu Wada, I think. I think it's for Mr. Bowser, the same. Is that a foul there by Conor Metcalf? Mr. Metcalf. Confirmed, big time. Vayich. Soldana, there you go. Run forward by Metcalf. Gap yeah, wasn't quite there to slip it through for Duke. Miller. It's good, tenacious scrapping. Isaiah Kumba. Oh, frustrated with Lewis Miller for losing the ball. Karu sends it forwards. Ryan has to come and gather and does. Boss. Got to get back for his fellow substitute, Brandon Borello. Had three red jerseys around him and somehow still came away with the ball. Kevin Bacchus has a lash at it from long range. And the upshot is a throw. Australia.
crowd of 14,537. I think uh, the biggest flags you're likely to see throughout this qualifying campaign. My Arabic is not great, so I can't tell you what it says. Maybe Danny McBreen can. Wait, I can't. Sorry, <laughs> Simon. game again tonight has been Harry Sutar not just his goal yeah he's been very dominant in defense controlled the area still time for Palestine flag here Australia almost stopped for a moment so I guess you call that a snapshot from Tamar Sayam way off target Harry Suto wasn't happy there. He felt that they would come back from an offside position. I tend to agree with him as well. well Played to the whistle though. As Palestine have shown that they are dangerous. Said all that, Australia are, as of now, ten minutes away from the important three points. What would be a third consecutive clean sheet as well. <laughs> it's actually really well controlled by Brandon Borello, even though he's on the floor and he's got a free kick for his troubles. And uh, Tama Sayam, who's been one of Palestine's better players tonight, takes his leave. Islam Batran to replace him. He's toiled hard. He came closest of any Palestinian to breaking through, forcing that fine save out of Matt Ryan in first half stoppage time. Wasteful free kick from Australia. And they've got to scramble back because the counter attack is on. Sotar again is across to provide the necessary cover and even to ensure that Palestine can't take a quick throw. That's real professionalism. Well, he was always odds on, wasn't he? he comes across, he needs some high rolls to help out there. Chase his own kick on through. Scoop through the middle and uh, foul. Timmy Kumba, Oberiga, and all over the top of his opponent. Well, it wasn't a bad run, was it? Just drifted off the shoulder. Very suitable. Miller just did enough to get back and get his body between the attacker and the ball. If Australia do go on to win this one, Maka, I don't think it's a performance that will win too many beauty prizes, but that's sometimes just what you have to do in an away World Cup qualifier, get the points. Yeah, exactly right. The ultimate is the ultimate aim, the three points. Hello, managed to keep that alive, knotted down by Metcalf. Duke can't turn, and Irvine can't hit the target, but Australia, I think, will get a corner. There's another good opportunity. With a good ball in, and Mitch Duke held the ball up. The nod down, and... Manini with the desperation with the block as Jackson Irvine come came in to 
tuck it into that side netting. So Sitar again will attract lots of attention. And that open up the space for somebody else, is it? Did for Jordan Boss. Keanu Bacchus is complaining of a little elbow to the ribs. Referee Kasimal had to be has a bit of sorting out to do before Conor Metcalf can deliver. Now we're good to go. There's a whole cluster of players around the goalkeeper. Metcalf puts it right in that spot and Irvine nods wide. Wouldn't have counted anyway, whistle had gone. It's been no holds barred in those six yard areas on corners, isn't it? Well, the balance of chances created, Macross. Well, he probably should be further in front. There's a little uh, tangle between Miller and Kumba. And Miller is the player who's penalised. And this is a big opportunity here for Palestine. Well, I think Lewis Miller was fouled, in, he the was first, fouled first. in the first instance and then blocked the run here. He was waiting for the foul there, didn't come, and then runs across. And the referee's seen that as a foul as we look back at the, the missed header from Irvine, but it was a foul on the keeper. And this is a real dangerous situation for the Socceroos now. Five minutes to go in Q8. Socceroos lead. A precious but a narrow one. And they must defend this set piece. Rami Hamadi, of all people, is down after that uh, previous challenge. Got a bit of a problem. Not for long. Rather baffling. All his teammates were saying, get up, we want to go, we want to take this for a kid. Oh, the shoulder. Which uh, just increases the tension really a bit for Australia as they wait to defend this free kick. Another change to be made by Palestine. Mahmoud Wadi is going to replace Zayn Kutba. Wadi, a player who plays for the Arab contractors in Egypt. Six foot two, a nickname the Tower. So maybe that's why they're sending him on at this precise moment. Here's the free kick from al -Batat. Mitch Duke sends it away from danger. Irvine gets it further clear. Jordy Boss commits the foul. Sort of entering now or never territory for Palestine. See the desperation now. Every time the ball stopped or free kick, the Palestinians running quickly to get the ball. They know they're still in with a the shot. There's Al Bata. They've hung in there in their difficult moments. Could run by the fullback. The cross was beyond Karub, and that calf gets it out of harm's way. Still more work to do defensively for the Socceroos. And by no means home and host just yet. This is Ode Dubai. Saldana, his cross is charged down, but uh, with the arm of Keanu Bacchus, another free kick for Palestine. You can see the arm raised there. Mm -hmm. 
are starting to need a good delivery from Saldana. Salah, Terminini waits. Saldana's delivery. Fraction too deep, if you ask me, but still there. Back in it comes Sitar again with an important clearing header. Miscue on the edge of the box by Mahmoud Wadi and Palestine wants a penalty. Referee Kasim Al Hatmi completely unmoved. And they will continue those protests. Let's have another look at it. It's just an air swing, isn't it? For mine. As you see. Brandon Borello just comes out really to block it, and there's no contact there at all. If anything, it's the follow through He's from the shot. He's kicked Borello, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah, exactly. And they're certainly making life difficult for the Socceroos, aren't they? We're into the 90th minute of the game. to spring forward, Duke. Position for the return, so too was Terminini. Jamie McLaren is uh, one of those standing by to come on, ain't no deal. The other player, if uh, the ball goes dead, it's not with skill. Abu Wada, there's no foul, Mahmoud Wadi. It's going to be five minutes, or a minimum thereof, to be added on. <laughs> Palestine desperately trying to extend this long, unbeaten record in Asian qualifiers. It's going to be Matty Ryan. And uh, maybe Macca, they will thank their goalkeeper and captain as much as anybody in Australia if they do win this game for that quite brilliant save in first half stoppage time. Yeah, it was a great save. Looked for all money to be the equaliser just before going into the break. Harry Sutar is probably another man they can thank. Like he got the goal, but he's won everything at the back, hasn't he? Sent forward by Terminini. Good header won by that man, the tower, Mahmoud Wadi. Sutar in exactly the right position once again. Sukar is not able to stick hold of the ball, and too often that's been the case tonight. Salah angles it out towards Saldana. Borello working hard to try and keep Palestine penned in. Given away by Miller. Oh, that's lovely. From Saldana. But the cross, fortunately for Palestine, doesn't match it. Tied that cross, wasn't it? He could have driven with the ball. Tried to whip it in early. Only Ryan always the favourite there. Dying embers of a patchy performance by Graham Arnold's team, but one that's at the moment at least has them. Zero again on three points, three precious points. A little bit of uh, extra insurance. Maybe just time wasting at the end. Not going to be uh, early time for Jamie McLaren. Or Aiden O'Neill to pick up any sweat as they replace Keanu Backers and Mitch Duke, respectively.
no hurry to take this throw either. How do you assess the Australian performance overall tonight, Maka? Oh, look, Simon, well, you said it earlier. The ultimate aim is three points. It remains as, as it is. They've achieved that. It's not going to win any points for being easy on the eye or a dominating performance. Palestinians have shown that it's very difficult, as we know from past adventures. It's not easy to come and pick up the points to dominate matches against these nations. Once again, the Java Al Ahmad Stadium, Kuwait City, is a minute to go, proving to be a happy hunting ground. For the Socceroos, they won four out of four during the COVID affected World Cup qualifiers of 2021. Barring uh, a late goal here for Palestine, they are going to claim the three points back at the same venue two years on. long throw off the head of Salah is it going to drop here for Jordi Boss to finish it but no straight at Hamady he knows that time is of the essence but he's not quite accurate enough with his release and that might just be about that There we go, and in the end, it was really a case of never mind the performance, feel the result, two wins from two, six points out of six, thanks to Harry Suttar's first half goal. The perfect start to Australia's World Cup quest as Palestine, who toiled hard tonight, were edged out by Graham Arnold's team. The World Cup can be put on the back burner now until March next year. Next up, the Asian Cup in January in Qatar for the Socceroos. It wasn't the most fluent of performances, and Palestine, to be fair to them, made life pretty tough for the green and goal, but in the end, that combination once again, Craig Goodwin's delivery and Harry Suttar's header from the set-piece were enough to claim all three points for the Socceroos. Full-time in Kuwait City, Palestine nil, Australia one. So the Socceroos make it two from two as they kick off their qualification to the World Cup in 2026. One nil as you heard the final score. And yes, the man with the best set piece in the green and gold whips it in to Harry Suta. Arguably the tallest Socceroo. I think he's taller than Cameron Burgess, but he is a big bopper. Far from convincing Luke Wilkshire and Alex Brosk at times, it looked as though the Socceroos were going to let that lead slide, but they walk away and they get it done. I think that's going to be the takeaway, isn't it? It's the, the three points, uh, the job is done. Um, by all means, it wasn't a, a fantastic performance, um, less than convincing. And, and you know, look, we, we touched on it, Brosky, that going into the back end of that second half and Palestine were pushing, had they got an equaliser, you, you couldn't really begrudge them if they did manage to do that. No, and, and if they had, I mean, it was fully deserved as well. I mean, they pushed, um, and, and the longer it stayed 1-0, uh, the more they felt that they, their chance was coming, but it was just a lack of quality for them. You know, no one really that, that ever looked like uh, scoring. And, and to be fair, the only time they did, Matty Ryan was there to stop it. And, and when we talk about our chances, you know, again, here we see Jordi Boss off set pieces. That was when we were most threatening. We didn't carve out any clear opportunities apart from the one Borrello um, had. And, you know, we saw again, Palestine were pushing. We had to defend desperately at times. Harry Suda was phenomenal again, both obviously in attack score and the goal, but also defending the box. Um, and we need him, like I said, him and Matty Ryan. Yeah, I think as well, I and mean, we touched on it at half time, that, you know, just how difficult these games can be. And again, a reminder, not, not just for us here watching, uh, but, but I think for them, you know, I think for the players who probably thought after a 7 0 win that they'd go over there and cruise. But um, look, it was anything but that. The performance was, was, um, it was flat, the movement wasn't the same, there was no sharpness to any of it, um, and completely understandable. Again, it's not, we're not going to expect a 7-0 and, and a great fluid performance every single time. 
Sometimes it's just about getting the win and moving on. Yeah, Palestine, they were asking so many questions. Tamar Sam, then number nine. In particular, it was Matty Ryan's fingertips that kept Australia in the lead on the 18th minute mark. And it was copy-paste, really, from what we saw against Bangladesh last Thursday night. Craig Goodwin, Harry Sutar, easy as you like. A set-piece. So another goal from a set-piece team. This is, well... This is becoming the thing. It is, it is. And look, it, you know, we've touched on before, you play to your strengths. And when you've got someone who can deliver a ball like Craig Goodwin can, and you've got someone like Harry Suter that heads the ball like he does, then you've got to, you've got to use that weapon. And, you know, especially in these, these um, the Asian, against the Asian nations, the qualifiers with the height and the physical prowess that we have, you've got to make most of it. And we've done that yet again. And, and it'd be so deflating for them as well because up until that point we hadn't looked like doing anything and, and Palestine for the most part was showing more I think going forward and then out of nowhere I mean they would do their homework on, on marking Harry Sutar and sometimes doubling up on him there's just nothing you can do to be honest so you know while we've got Craig Goodwin and that delivery on the pitch and Harry Sutar out there we're always going to be a threat. It's difficult and against opposition like we have seen this morning evening over there you're reluctant then because of Goodwin and Sutar and that combination together to take either of them off, right? When you think about who came on in the second half, who was going to add something up top, you think you keep those two on because that could be the route to goal yet again and it's most likely to be the route to goal yet again as we look at the match stats. Harry Sutar, of course, with his 10th international goal in his 22nd international game. It was a really competitive, it was a really strong performance from Palestine. They could have jagged the goal very, very easily. Well, you see there, you just look at the stats there, final third entries, 55 to 44 in Palestine's favour. Crosses 26 to 15, 108 passes in the final third compared to Australia's 88, which actually shows that Palestine were the more threatening team throughout the match. They absolutely were, Broski. Look, there was, there was definitely more intent from them. There was more of a sharpness every time they had the ball to go forward again. Just that lack of quality, which, to be fair, we weren't showing either in the front third. We weren't showing much, you know, in terms of ball movement and, and creating chances. Um, but look, I mean, possession, we shaded it because we kept the ball, we kept it moving. We're up 1-0, so they had to come out a little bit. Um, again, just flat, we'll take the points and, and move on. We'll take the points and we'll focus on the Asian Cup in January. That is what we are going to do. All right, we're off to a short break. Don't forget the A-Leagues, they return this weekend with a huge Sydney derby. And off we go. Sydney FC and Western Sydney Wanderers get it on again. And still, Cassini Yankee! Past one on his left foot, let's fly! First blood in the derby, and it's sky blue! Ewan Hoff against his former club, a howitzer into the top corner! And it comes, and Lafondra with 10 minutes to go! Is that the crucial blow? Great city, it was the Socceroos that got the job done against Palestine. Was it all that convincing? No, it wasn't as ruthless as what we saw uh, a couple of days earlier in Melbourne against Bangladesh 7-0. But 1-0 the final score and that is job done as the Socceroos continue their road to the World Cup to qualify in 2026. And they do sit top of the pops looking at Group I. Lebanon and Bangladesh played out a draw earlier in the evening as well. That one just wrapped. So they're sitting pretty at the top of the group, being the Socceroos. They'll next face towards January in Qatar, where it is the Asian Cup. They kicked that off against India. And World Cup qualifying will commence, recommence, I should say, back in March. Well, let's now hear from the Gaffer Michaels of Pony, is with Graham Arnold. Well, Graham, an important three points on the road. Uh, what did you make of the team's performance tonight in uh, very difficult circumstances? Mate, it's exactly uh, what I predicted and thought, you know, that uh, you know, Palestine, uh, we're going to come out in that type of energy, that type of work rate and fight, and you've got to give full uh, credit to Palestine. Probably we didn't play our best, but the uh, most important thing was the three points. In terms of the structure of the team tonight to, in areas for improvement, what, what do you want to look at? Yeah, look, I think... Uh, that game was really a fight for the second ball game. They, you know, they had four up front, they got a couple of big boys. They smashed it long, and we were getting uh, getting ready for the second ball. And you know, I think we obviously we can do better. But again, I'm very proud of the boys after everything uh, off the field that we've gone through. You know, getting this game planned late. You know, everything late, and uh, the fact that we got it done is the main thing. 
Once again, a set piece uh, proved important for you tonight. How much work do you put into that and how much is Harry a focus? We saw Harry score, but then Geordie Boss hit the crossbar as well with another set piece. No, look, set pieces are crucial. Um, especially when you've got someone Harry Soot's size, height, then the delivery is important. And Craig Goodwin's delivery on that corner was fantastic. But, uh, you know, I'll have a bit of a break now, a bit of a reflection on everything, and uh, I'll look forward to that. Thanks for joining us. Cheers. Well, we heard it there, of course. Set pieces are crucial. They are well and truly the way forward when it comes to what the Socceroos have been dishing up in front of goal. It'll be interesting as well as they face ahead to the Asian Cup in January, team, because the opposition is going to be quite similar in terms of top-tier Asian opposition throughout Southeast Asia. And it's going to be challenging yet again over in Qatar. I'm just wondering if there are... I mean, we saw it against Bangladesh, yes, which were the, the second in terms of ranking, the second lowest ranked team that the Socceroos have played. But when it does get trickier, that route to goal... Is it going to be over-reliant on a set piece, on the set piece being that route to goal? At the moment, we, we sort of are. You, you've seen it there tonight. We, we, we struggled to create clear-cut opportunities from open play. Um, you know, the likes of Goodwin in open play, Boyle, were, were McCarff tonight, were, or this morning, were a little bit disappointing and lacklustre. We need that little bit more creativity and spark to be able to open teams up because we're going to face that in the Asian Cup. You are stewing over there, Broski. What's going on? No, nothing, nothing. Look, I do think it will be different. I think in a tournament in Qatar where we're so comfortable as well, the quality of the pitches that we'll be playing mm -hmm. at, um, yeah. it'll be different. You, there's no travel concerns like what we had here. I mean, it does take it out of you, Lukey. I don't care that they're travelling business class and getting massages in the back of the plane. It's still you're on a plane and you, get he you, you feel heavy when you land and, and you've only got another day or two to prepare. Um, all those things. Again, Arnie spoke about the second ball there, but, you know... It, that's where the quality of the pitch becomes an issue. If you don't get that ball down and move it quickly uh, and you're constantly having to worry about your touches, then it, it makes it hard to move the ball around. These guys have come out with incredible amount of energy and made it hard for us. They pressed us high, turned, forced us into uh, turning over possession a lot. Uh, so, I, look, I don't think we'll, we'll got any concerns heading into the Asian Cup in terms of putting in performances like this. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you look at what the Asian Cup will dish up and I, I, and I know the surrounds and the ground and where you are in Kuwait. They are familiar with that ground though having played against, um, play, played against Kuwait there in the lead up to the last World Cup. Let's get some more reaction now from over in Kuwait and hear from Harry Suter. We know that strikers like to keep a count of how many goals they score. Harry, are you keeping a count? That's 10 now, isn't it? It is, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, great feeling to be on the score sheet again. Um, I never take it for granted, you know, Scoring for, for your country is, yeah, something really special and um, it's just getting sweeter and sweeter, obviously. I win tonight. Um, I don't think we were best pleased with our, our performance. I think we can play a lot, lot better. Um, but it's a great lesson for, for us as a team. Um, you know, a couple of the new guys coming into the squad about playing games away in Asia. Um, you know, this is what you're going to face, you know, long balls. I don't want to be making excuses, but... Um, Obviously, it's a very different to the to the home games, Bangladesh games. Um, and if you want to go through and, and qualify, these are the games you've got to win. Um, we stood up to the task, um, and, and at the end of the day, we won the game. But uh, we know as a group and a squad, we can play a whole lot better. When you look at those set pieces from an attacking sense, obviously you're a target, but there was a few times tonight that the referee stopped things. There's a lot of uh, body work off the ball. How much work do you put into those set pieces in preparation for a game like tonight? Yeah. I think with, with not a lot of training sessions, you know, a lot of it is tactical um, and we know one of our main strengths is set pieces. Now, sometimes, obviously, I can be used as a bit of a decoy if they're going to put two or three men on me. And listen, we've got Duki, Jacko, you know, Cam Borges, Kai, great headers of the ball. So sometimes I've just got to go away and, and take, take men away and, and hopefully they can come to the back. I had, we had a couple other chances tonight. Um, and yeah, listen, we'll score when we can, especially especially away from home, um, set pieces are so important and it's something that we as a group kind of feel every time we get an attack and free kick or a corner that we can we can at least get a, a shot on target and, and try and hopefully get a goal. And your defensive work tonight was outstanding as well, your positioning, you feel like uh, these two games have been valuable for you uh, going back to club land? Yeah, massive. Like, I'm just so happy to, to be back on the grass and playing um, and just getting that kind of hunger and winning feeling back, there's, there's nothing like it. Um, and yeah, just delighted. I thought the whole kind of back four was great tonight and stood up to the task. Um, you know, they were a, they were a big physical side. Um, 
But I think as a group and the two midfielders in front of us, yeah, I'm really stood up to the task. Can I just can I just say something as well? Yeah, obviously. Can I? I know my um, uh, my girlfriend's granny's in hospital at the moment. She's had a really tough time. So I just want to say, you know, hopefully you get better soon, June, and uh, we're, I'm thinking about you. Sweet message from Harry Sutar to June there, and he is a pivotal point for the Socceroos' defence. He is a big anchor at the back when he is alongside Cameron Burgess. Watch out. It is the Tower of Terror. Australia v India. This is what's heading away. The Asian Cup, it kicks off in January. Saturday the 13th, Australia kicks off their campaign against India live from 10.30pm. All of the games live and exclusive right here on Network 10 and Paramount Plus. So it is two from two. The Socceroos did get it done against Bangladesh 7-0 and then it was 1-0 tonight against Palestine. Team, thank you so much for your company this morning. We got it done. <laughs> right? I think we got there in the end. I think it might be time for You're that. still asking me how you qualify for the World Cup in 2026 and I'll get back to you in a text message. Thank you so much for joining us at home and enjoy all the A-Leagues that is hitting away across the weekend. See you soon. Show sure.